Hi guys, I want to talk to you about something that has been creeping into nearly every conversation I've had with my coaching clients lately, and that is the idea of not being good enough. And I want to challenge that because a lot of us feel that way. I know I felt that way for most of my life before I figured out where the crux of that was coming from so that I could stop thinking in that way. So last night I had a conversation with a young man who is extremely smart, extremely empathetic, and for, for whom I see an incredibly bright future because his present is a lot brighter than what he thinks. And in part of our conversation, it was all around the idea that he wasn't living up to expectations. And so what we did is I'm like, okay, well, whose expectations? So we had the conversation. And what ended up coming out was that these expectations that he had assumed were being put upon him by other people. I put quotes around all of that because they aren't actually real. And a lot of us go about life feeling that we don't stack up, that we're not good enough, that we're not working hard enough, that we're not accelerating our careers fast enough, that we don't have as much money blah, 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 as we're quote unquote supposed to. And yet when you really challenge the supposed to, against whose standards are you measuring yourself? And usually if you're really, really honest with yourself, most of these standards and most of these expectations are nothing more than a myth. And they're things that our brains have gotten used to thinking that um, we fear judgment, we fear rejection, and everybody wants, of course, to fit in. And yet in fitting in, we falsify the parameters by which we are judging ourselves. And the reason why that is so dangerous is because you never really know if you're gonna hit those expectations or not. So because we don't know where those expectations, limitations lie, we don't know where that goalpost really is, we spend our lives continuously searching for it yet never achieving anything. And if you know anything about success, and I certainly hope you guys do, how awesome do you feel when you check something off? when you finish that thing. So you graduate from university, college, high school, whatever, you get a certification, you complete something. There's, there's this, these endorphins that sort of like, it just consume us whenever something like that happens. And yet for most of our lives, if we don't recognize that we're doing it, we set these false expectations for ourselves and we never achieve those wonderful dopamine highs because we're always falling short. And because we always feel like we're falling short, falling short, falling short, we tell ourselves that we're not good enough. And when you tell yourself, I'm not good enough, when you say, I'm stuck in a rut, when you say, I'm not fill in the blank enough, you stop yourself from any forward movement. I'll share one more little thing with you. I got a, a, a text from someone yesterday and 18 months ago, he joined me with his father at one of my masterminds here in the Burlington area. And one of the things we did was, uh, it was in the summer and there was a little campfire out back. And so I had everyone go around and write the one self-limiting belief that way they would truly like to get rid of. And everybody had to stand up and they had to read it out to the group, ball it up and throw it in the fire. And that was to be the end of that limiting belief. They were supposed to stop thinking that way about that. Now this gentleman was very, very shy. And he felt he wasn't good enough in so many ways. And yet I could see beyond that depression, the, the character and the intelligence and the empathy behind that facade. And it was crushed that the, the, this wall that he had created about himself, around himself was crushing him. And so all that tiny little exercise did was just cracks a little hole in that young man's wall. I kept in touch with him over the next, again, it's been about 18 months since that particular day, just checking in. How are you doing? Um, you know, he was going to get his real estate license. Did you get it? Are you getting coaching? Is there someone helping you, right? And yesterday he told me um, that he had successfully joined a team with his dad and that he told me um, how successful he had been in only one month of actually doing that, that he was holding his own, which was really important to him, right? And he wasn't sure 18 months ago if that was gonna be possible. And yet he has made it possible because he got past that self-limiting belief 
that he had created for himself, that he had presumed other people thought about him, and he recognized that it wasn't true, and he did something about it. And because of that, he is now well on his way to what I know is going to be a prolific career, no matter what he does. So both of these people I'm talking to you guys about are in their mid-20s. And there's so much life ahead of them. I wish someone had told me in my mid-20s about the danger of false expectations, of false assumptions, and how those can crush you to the point where you don't try anymore. And I am so glad that 10 years ago, I decided that I, I didn't want to be like that anymore. I didn't know what to do, but I knew what I didn't want to be anymore. Um, and my book just went to my publishers for the last time. Dear, oh, I hope so. Um, and that's what it's all about. A lot of that book is about my journey from self-sabotage, which is what setting these false expectations do to you. It creates sabotage and you will... Um, you'll hamstring your career, you'll hamstring your life, you'll have the wrong people um, around you, which will just exacerbate the problem. So I went from that to where I am now, which is not perfect by any stretch, but I am perfect in my imperfections. I am happy because I am clear. I know when to reach out to people and I know when to look within for strength. And I know what it means to feel that I am enough. This right here? is absolutely enough. And one of the exercises, and you may find this helpful, and I hope you guys are all still listening. Um, one of the exercises that I get a lot of my clients to do is to identify and draw and write out for themselves the perfect version of themselves. Who do you really want to become? Confident, empathetic, kind, forgiving, compassionate, hardworking, decisive, right? Whatever the words are, like write as many as you can of the perfect version of yourself. And then what I want you to do is I want you to take that and I want you to put it on the mirror in your bathroom where you brush your teeth in the morning, whatever else you do in, in the bathroom, but you see it every single day. And you're going to reread those words of who it is you want to become. And what you're going to find is over time, you, by reading those things and thinking of those things, your brain will start to believe those things. And when your brain starts to believe something, you start to act on those things and you will become that person. The best per version of yourself is right here. The best version of me is sitting in front of me. My job is to let her out. I hope you guys have found this helpful. These are lessons that have really helped the people that I've been talking to. Um, some of the kid people I'm talking to are clients. The two examples I gave from you, or young adults that I take my own time to mentor and to help because I remember what it was like to be a very lost 25 year old. And if I can help even one person, even through videos like this, to not feel lost, then I have lived a fulfilled life. I hope you guys have a fantastic day. Wherever you are when you're hearing this, write out the best version of yourself, put it somewhere you can see every single day, and then become that wonderful and perfect version of yourself. Take care, guys.